Hey everyone, Nate here from WASD20. Welcome back to RPG Class Vlog. This is Class Vlog number five, and I'm coming to you at the very end. It is after day 10 now. It's Saturday. Class finished up yesterday, and I'm here just in the room cleaning stuff up and getting ready for second semester, which is coming Monday already. And um, yeah, it's uh, time to reflect, time to look back, talk about what we did the last two days of class, because I haven't given you an update since then, and um, just tell you what I'm thinking for uh, possible future years of teaching So You Want to Slay a Dragon. Um, so let's uh, get started by looking at what we did here. Oh, I don't have it up. So here it is. On day nine, uh, that was Thursday, we had a presentation on fate, and um, that's a system I actually have one of the books for, and I have some fudge dice, so um, that was nice for the kids to be able to see. Uh, then we debriefed a little bit of our Star Wars Force and Destiny experience, and um, that was overall pretty um, pretty negative. A lot of the, a lot of the comments I should say from students were pretty negative and critical of the system, and um, it was hard for me to to sit through that. Even though I don't know much about the system and I haven't played it, I have so many friends who liked it and so well reviewed that um, I, I feel like a lot of the uh, comments were from maybe just a lack of experience with the system or lack of knowledge. But I don't want to judge too harshly. You know, my, my students' experience is valid. Um, and I don't think, um, yeah, I don't necessarily think that because something is well reviewed and a lot of people like it, that you're wrong if you don't. But uh, overall, the, the general feeling I got in the presentations on different systems and in our experience playing this one other system other than D&D is that anything that's not D&D, um, the students were <clears throat> a, little, a little negative against. And that was a little bit frustrating just because I feel like there's, there's a lot of value here and I think that um, it's worth exploring. Not that everyone needs to explore lots of systems. I think that there's nothing wrong with picking a system and just sticking with it if, if you like it. But... Anyway, I'll leave that there. Overall, the debriefing, I think, you know, they didn't really like the dice um, and stuff like that, okay? Uh, and perhaps part of that is because, um, you know, they didn't learn the rules that well, really. I think that there was a lot of misunderstandings that I was catching as I was going around of, um, of things not um, being done quite right. And, um, and the adventure is very linear, and I think a lot of them didn't like that, which is valid. Um, they're trying to teach you the basics, and it's, it's pretty linear. The um, history lesson for Thursday was on the um, basically 1979 and forward, uh, moral panic, growth, and the fall of Gary Gygax. And uh, so we went through D&D um, becoming very popular and then becoming very criticized. Uh, and we talked about this uh, situation with the MSU student, uh, mazes and monsters, and... Um, but also how, and, and lots of other controversy, but also how uh, that made D&D maybe more mainstream in a way, um, or at least more popular, uh, and kind of forced it into the limelight for a while. But then also is perhaps one of the reasons that it still is a little bit on the fringe, because people still hold on to a lot of these misconceptions from the past about D&D. And when you say, I play Dungeons and Dragons, they might give you a funny look. Um, anyway, <clears throat> uh, but Positive Press 2, we watched a little clip from E.T. where they're playing a very D&D-like game. Um, growth and waste, um, just, yeah, a lot of waste and, and poor business deci decisions. Uh, a, a cartoon. <laughs> um, and then management turmoil with the Blooms being forced out and Gygax himself being forced out as well. Um, so... Yeah, the glory days of TSR were over. I'll get back to this one in a moment. But, but that was our brief history lesson on uh, the, the 1980s, essentially. Then we did a little bit of world building together. And the students kind of, I, I proposed some different kind of feels for worlds we could create. And uh, they picked a sort of a, a water world. They all voted and there was a bunch of different proposals. And they picked like a, a, a mostly water ocean planet, basically, that had very little land. And um, so that was that was really interesting, and uh, you know I'm glad they picked something unique. It was kind of cool. I was uh, thinking it would be nice to pick very traditional fantasy, but hey, I'm I'm glad they in the end picked something kind of unique. And um, then they went about and we divided into different groups. There was four different tables, and they each 
table created a different settlement, city, town, something for the world, named it, came up with economy, government, races, things like that. And they went kind of wild with it. And I think they had fun with it. And it was kind of cool to see. Um, so yeah, we did a little collaborative world building together. Then um, I asked them actually for some feedback on uh, tips for players. What makes a good role playing game player? What tips can you give? And they gave me some good tips. Uh, and you can see those here. I'll probably post these or even ma maybe make a video of some of these player tips or maybe blog posts. So I'm not gonna post them now, but um, these are some of my tips uh, for being a good player and improving role playing and then heard from some of them too. And that was good. Uh, then uh, we talked about uh, the rest of history, which I had hoped to have a whole separate day for, but because of the snow day, it just didn't work out. And this was basically 1989 to present with the release of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Second Edition. And then um, TSR being sold to Wizards of the Coast and kind of the business trouble for with Wizards of the Coast at the time with you know the increasing popularity of Magic the Gathering and Warhammer and other games. D&D um, &D not doing nearly as well. And um, then, um, yeah, eventually running out of money, needing to be sold. Talked about third edition and the open gaming license and how Pathfinder came out of all that business as they moved to fourth edition and then fifth edition. So I just, this was just 10, 15 minutes of me, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, describing some of the business and also the, um, the differences between systems and the general way they were uh, publicly perceived uh, by D&D fans. So, yeah, then uh, we went um, and then we figured out uh, game groups for the next day. And the way I did this is I asked for four volunteers and I said, we're going to have a free gaming day. They all wanted to play D&D. So I just said, OK, four gaming groups. We need four DMs. And I got five volunteers and then two of them who had already had experience with it. I said, OK, you guys roll to see who who gets to do it. Then we had three new DMs, and the new DMs did really well. Um, I think that um, it was rocky. It was definitely rocky, especially for one of the groups. I think uh, they had a new DM who was just who was struggling a little bit. Uh, I'm glad he tried it, um, and I hope that he learns, you know, what he needs to do better maybe uh, for next time. His group was very helpful, very you know supportive, and and not you know critical or rolling their eyes, but um, trying to be helpful and help them run a game. Um, so yeah, they were, we were a little rushed with, you know, just a little over two hours, I think, is what they had to play. And that's that's a little rushed for a session. Um, I think they all felt felt a bit rushed. But um, yeah, it, overall, it, I think it went well. Um, still a little disappointed in the planning of some of the DMs and, and just not planning well. Um, maybe it's newness, but some of them have run games before and just I think it's just um, they need to get it together and plan. And that leads me to my tips for GMs, which <laughs> um, prepare is one of them. Anyway, I, I will also make uh, these a blog post probably and break them into sections and elaborate on them a little more. Uh, so I'm not going to show all of those right now. But yeah, I did uh, share that on day 10 a little too late. I think that I shared a couple tips a day usually. In, in, and talked about how to DM and some of the basics and some of the, the some good tips I think along the way. But I wish I had had this document, you know, earlier to show them uh, the the DM tips. Instead, what I did is on the last day I, I put a packet together. I wanted to give them something physical to take home, not just the website. They'll have access to the website wasd20.net/rpgclass, just as you have access to it. But I wanted to give them something physical, so I made this little packet. So you want to slay a dragon RPG resources for students. And I distributed this on Friday. RPG player tips from Mr. Vanderzee, from students. RPG reading list and resources, books, online resources, and good YouTube channels. Uh, game master tips, there are 12 of them. And then at the end, things you might want to keep at the gaming table. I got some feedback from other folks on the Absolute Tabletop Facebook group too. And that, that was nice, so thanks for all you who contributed to that. Uh, conversation about things you, you know, your essential things you keep at the table. And then this is 10 reasons why role playing games are a positive force for kids and adults alike, an article by Martin Rayla, Ralia. And I'm going to put um, a, excuse me, a link to this um, 
article on my, my website, wasd20.net slash RPG class, so you all can see it too. Um, I think that it's really a good article. And one of the reasons that, one of the things that prompted me to uh, want to find an article like that is because actually I was confronted by a staff member on Friday uh, before class who heard that we were playing Dungeons and Dragons and was really deeply concerned. Um, you know, I teach in a Christian school, and so I kind of wondered if I might get um, some flack just because people, you know, it has a, a <laughs> um, bad reputation um, that I think is mostly um, over. I, I think that, you know, most people have moved past that and when, learn, when they learn what the game is, don't really have a problem with it. Um, but this particular person did. Um, and part of it was because I think um, this person did not know what the game was. Um, but it, um, it shook me up a little bit, just you know, having someone so deeply concerned about what we were doing, um, just very concerned. And again, partially from misinformation and partially just because there's a difference of, of beliefs, I think, between this person and myself about um, fantasy and magic and things like that. And um, some of the same things that might, maybe a person might have problem with Harry Potter over, which, you know, it's hard for me to understand, but um, it was a friendly conversation. Uh, we both expressed ourselves and I think that it wasn't really much of a debate. I think it was honestly this person wanting more information. And so I, I emailed this person some resources and, and um, yeah, it, it, was, it was okay, it was okay. Um, but it had an effect on me just because it does, even though I am not shaken in my beliefs in the value of this hobby and uh, how it can be really such a positive force, I think that, um, and how it is definitely not a gateway to the occult, um, I, I just can't see that. Um, still, it, it shook me up a bit because it doesn't feel good to have someone down the hall or whatever um, who disapprove so strongly of what we're doing, what I'm doing with students, right? Just, a, it's not a good feeling. So anyway, I don't want to ramble too much about that. Perhaps I'll comment more in a future video on that and, um, and talk more about faith and D&D &D or whatever. But that uh, played in a little bit. I mentioned it to my students, that conversation. Didn't tell them who or anything, but uh, on, on the value of the hobby in, in terms of creativity and, and encouraging them to use it as a positive thing. Uh, to build community and to be something that's inclusive and um, something that, that exercises our God-given creativity. So I think that was a good conversation. It was pretty brief faith reflection. Then we had a presentation on Vampire, uh, World of Darkness game. And then uh, we, and, and by the way, that's a game where I, I, I do have a little more concerns maybe. But anyway, I won't get into that where it's, you know, it is dark. You are playing mainly evil characters. And that's just for me. Not a place I like to go, but anyway. Um, then we had some playtime with D&D uh, &D 5th Edition, and as I said, I kind of already commented on how the DMs did with that, and overall I'm really proud of everyone for contributing and being positive, and uh, for new DMs for having the bravery to try it out. We had 12 total students try to DM, and I think as we started the class, maybe three of them had ever done it before. So that's awesome. Uh, and some of them not very much. So really proud of them. Uh, just great students. I'll miss them a lot as we start second semester next week. I do have some of them in class, I think, but um, hopefully see them around the building. I I've thought about getting a club going. I don't know if it'll work with my schedule, but I told them, hey, feel free to come by at lunch and hang out and talk and whatever. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's not the end, but uh, it is uh, the end of Winter of 2016, and So You Want to Slay a Dragon, closing the books on it for this year. And yeah, maybe teach it again next year. I still have my video games uh, class, that uh, video game history and critical thinking, that I, I love that class too, might teach that. I have some other ideas for winter room classes, lots of ideas, but uh, this was a fun one. I'm really glad I did it. And I wanna thank you all for sharing in the experience with me a little bit by watching these uh, vlogs and commenting on them and, and being supportive and asking good questions. So yeah, thank you all. And uh, until next time, I'll see you again soon, I'm sure. Peace, everybody.